We this morning will be hearing from John Rob, who uh, is an MD of the company called Nechi Roots, and I've had the privilege of knowing John probably for about 20 years, give or take. Uh, for my whole life, maybe John, maybe not quite. But I've uh, been in John's home, I've had the privilege of him watching him raise his kids, run a business, um, and have been deeply ministered to by John. I love his faith, he's a man of deep faith, he's a man that loves to bless others, he's always thinking of um, other people better than himself, very generous towards others. Um, very self-effacing and it's just an amazing servant and it's just an honor to build the kingdom with you and I'm not puffing you up, this is just the testimony of your life, John. And so can I encourage you to open up your hearts as John shares whatever God has given him uh, to share with us this morning. So John, without further ado, I'm going to you. How's it, guys? Um, wow, what an amazing turnout today, guys. It's so good to be together. Um, I must say this is really a, an incredible privilege to be asked to just come and share my story and um, that's what I'm going to try and do. I've got, um, I was just thinking about my story and it's made up of milestones. So I thought what I would do this morning is just share some milestones. I can't share them all because there's too many and I've only got about 25 minutes. So um, I, was, I was in Australia and New Zealand quite recently. Went to see my daughter there and, um, in the Auckland. But um, I was out hiking with a mate of mine, um, good old friend Steve. We were taking about a 7 k hike to a place called White Rock. And every time we went past people, I'd say, how's it? And the other guy would say, how's it? And then, and then Steve says to me, John, you can't say, how's it? They don't know what you mean. You must say, good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so, good day, mateys. Um, and then once you start engaging, it's like, so how are you then? You know? <laughs> but what was funny, I was walking into church. Um, we went to church with our family on, on the Sunday in Auckland. Um, big church, probably about as big as Red Point. And there's four guys standing in the foyer there, and as I walk past them, they're all speaking Afrikaans to each other. <laughs> I thought to myself, I can't get this off. Anyway, um, <clears throat> company, he works for a big construction company. He has a whole department of Afrikaans guys that speak, speak Afrikaans to each other and email each other in Afrikaans. This is in Auckland, in New Zealand. Can you believe it? I think about 15% of the population in Auckland looks like it. Anyway, um, I just want to say thanks um, for the opportunity. Um, it's great. It's put a lot of pressure on me to prepare. But um, I must just say, I'm, I'm not a fancy guy. There's quite a few, a few guys from there tune boots here. Not a fancy guy. I don't, don't profess to be anything fancy. I'm just a humble guy, regular guy. In the, as, a, as the Aussies would call it, I'm a tradie. So a tradesman, um, I studied mechanical engineering, I did a trade as a Morat, we'll talk more about that just now. But um, yeah, let's get stuck into it and let's see how we go. So my first milestone was in 1974. Um, I was 13, my brother, my mom called my brother and I Dave, most of you know Dave, and um, she said to us, just come and sit in the room, and we did, and she said, I want to introduce you to Jesus. I want to tell you about Jesus. And then I'll never forget that milestone because it was on that day that I gave my life to Jesus. And I walked with him closely and on and off as we go, you know how it goes, school, girls, cigarettes, drinking, um, army. <clears throat> and I walked on and off with him. But as you know, back in, in those days, we had to do two years national service. So I went in June 81 to June, uh, I mean, June 79 to June 81, my two years. Uh, five star ladiesmiths, uh, infantry. I did um, nine months basic training and then headed up to the border for 15 months with two breaks in between. But it was June 1980, I was on a patrol and it was a summer and it was hot. And during the middle of the day, we didn't walk. Those guys that were on the border would know you go and sit under a tree and away from other guys because if you're too close you can get taken out so you, you keep like 10 meters or six meters away from other guys and i'm just sitting quietly under the tree and i had a little you know those little new testament booklets i had one in my pocket and i took it out and i was reading it and suddenly i felt a presence with me and i realized that it was the presence of god and it's a milestone for me because no one can take that away i've i had that experience and I've never forgotten in 1980, that's 44 years ago, 
that I've had this experience, and it was a wonderful experience and one of the milestones in my life. Uh, next milestone, 1996, <clears throat> I, was, um, I started working for Neptune Boot in 92 on the mechanical and the engineering side. In 96, our financial director called me in and said, John, we want to just come into the boardroom with the directors. And he um, said to me, we want to reward you for hard work. For, we want to recognize you for what you contribute to this company. I'd only been there for four years. And that day, they gave me a check, which was about five times my then salary. And that is another massive milestone. But what really, what really blew me away was on that very morning, the Lord spoke to me from Psalm 18, verse 20. He said, I will reward you according to the cleanliness of your hands and because you follow no other gods. You can go read it for yourself. Psalm 18, verse 20. And I didn't understand it when I, that, that morning in, that, in my quiet time. I didn't understand it. But that very day, God rewarded me financially for, for hard work. And it was a milestone because I never looked, I never looked back after that. Um, and I took that, I took that money and I, I paid a 10% tithe and I gave 30% to Dave and I gave 30% to my mom and I kept 30%. Another milestone. Um, next milestone. Um, I met Bob's in 1997 and we got married at the end of 98. And um, we had three kids, you all know them. Most of you know them, Joel, Rebecca and Dana. But I'm going to backtrack a year, uh, two years to 95 when I had a very bad milestone. Um, I'd been married for 13 years and my wife left us. Myself and my two girls, my girls were um, 6 and 11 when she left. And that was hard guys. It was very hard. I married when I was 22. Um, she was the love of my life and she left for another man. It was hard. And I was angry, and I was bitter, and I was struggling through this time. And I just dug deep into God, like, why? How did this happen? And I was waiting for it, waiting for it. Um, and one night, I was so angry. Man, my girls, I put them to bed. And I took my gun, and I cocked it, and I was walking out the door. And I felt the Lord say to me, where are you going? And he said, John, <clears throat> where are you going? He knew where I was going, but I told him, I'm going to go kill him. I'm going to kill that man. I was so angry. He said, go and put that away. And hard man started. I started. It was a, a night of anguish. Probably three or four hours of anguish. I'm going to put that gun in my safe. And he said to me, you must forgive him. Yeah, I said, it was hard. Eh? Man, I was on my knees crying and tearing my heart to try and forgive him. And he kept on. He didn't leave me. He forgives him. It was hard. But you know... Eventually, about one o'clock in the night, I, I forgave him. And maybe I didn't really mean it, but he was a clean. <laughs> no, but I forgave him. I did. And, but the minute I said, I forgive him, it kind of set me free. And slowly, I mean, and maybe a week later, I had to go and forgive him again. And go a month later, forgive him again. And I remembered the anger. I forgave him again. But God set me free. And I want to say to you guys, don't carry unforgiveness. It makes you bitter. It will destroy you. It's like poison in your body. Forgive and let God deal with that. And that's what I did. And God, He taught me something there. Anyway, that's what I did. So, in this time between uh, my first wife leaving and me getting married to Boz, I might have known Boz, but I can't really remember. It was a long time ago. I was sitting having a quiet time. This is my next milestone. This is a big one. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to give you a son. And I actually laughed because... I'm like, I feel secondhand, I feel used, I don't have a wife, where am I to get a son from? But he impressed it upon my heart. I kind of left it, um, and then Boz and I started this most wonderful friendship, and today she still is my best friend. Dave Wiz was my best friend, he's my second best friend now. <laughs> but, um, I started this friendship, and I'm 26 years in, and she's still my best friend. Guys, my next point for you guys, the takeaway, I would love you guys to take away something from this morning. So, um, love your wives. Make your wife your best friend. It's just it's such a joy. And you know what? If you're struggling to love your wife, ask God, because he loves her more than you do. Ask him for your love, for his love for her, and he will give it to you. But, yeah, 23 years later, we stand here. There's my son, Joel. How's it, Joel? <laughs> I love this boy. He's such a gift and to us as a family. And to me, 
he's not just my son, he's my friend. And we rode our bikes to work to get, I mean, to church this morning. Uh, we love to go riding, we love working together, and man. Anyway, let's move on. <clears throat> so, um, I started at Neptune Boot in 1992. I studied mechanical engineering at Natal Technicon. Anybody remember where that was? Top of Smith Street? Good old place, eh? And uh, I remember you used to look out the window and you were like 60 bucks, eh? It was a really road to work. I suppose you didn't have money for cars. But anyway, um, and then I did a trade as a moron. Why? Um, our dad used to love working in the garage, hey, building bikes, building boats. I used to build boats and my dad used to race boats. So we got a love for boating and building stuff and working with our hands and learning how to weld and spray paint and strip engines and all that. So it was good to go and do a trade. So I did a trade as a Morat. Who knows what a Morat is? Some guys do, eh? It's a jack of all trades and master of all. <laughs> Uh, generally, I'm a master of that, but we like to say master of all. But it, it gives you a really good grounding in hydraulics and pneumatics and mechanics and engineering, and you know, it, it gives you a really good grounding. So I was very grateful for that. Um, 96, I did a production management diploma. I was starting to get more into production management. 99, the directors of the company, the, the then directors, um, called me and said, Don, our GM's leaving. We would like you to be general manager. So I accepted the job with a nice pay increase, very happy. And as I was saying, we were just, Boz and I just got married, so we bought a house, so things were tough, so it was wonderful. And um, that, that previous general manager, Rob, who left an half and was very, a very angry, bitter man, um, I actually thought of inviting him today, but uh, he was angry and bitter, and he actually was so glad he left. Um, and he had a foul mouth, like, yo. But about four years later, it was after a deacon's meeting here one night. Hello, Dougie. Um, we, were here, we were here one night and we were just driving away. It was about half past eight. And I felt the Lord say to me, invite Rob to the men's breakfast the next morning. The same kind of uh, men's breakfast that we're having here, but it was in the small hall. And uh, I thought, okay, so I phoned him, and I, it was late, so it was late, and I phoned Rob, and I said, Rob, I want to invite you to a men's breakfast at our church, and he said, John, I will be there. That's all we said. And uh, he had to get up and leave home before, like, 10 to quarter to 6, because he lives on the other side of Durban North. But he was here at 6.30, he came and had breakfast with us, and that morning, Sean Dooley, who was our pastor before Nick, um, uh, from 92 to 99, was, was um, Sean Dooley, and Sean was the guest speaker. And um, I can't remember what he spoke about, but he, he, at the end of his speech, he invited guys who wanted to make right with God to stand up. And Rob stood up. And Rob has been a radically changed man. I can't tell you how God has changed his life. I mean, he is the, he's a good friend of mine today. He encourages so many guys on a, on a morning WhatsApp. What a changed life. He's 75 now, 74, 75 now. And people cannot believe how, what a different guy this is. And it's just God in his life. Man, you can't believe it. Anyway, that's what's wrong. Um, 2001, I went to, bit, to um, business school and, and did a business management diploma because I'm now GM and I didn't know anything about running a business. But to try and learn some of this stuff. Um, 2006, um, I was approached by Julian Bear of Bear Holdings. Uh, very big property group here in Durban, and Julian asked me if I would um, come on board with them as they were going to buy the business. So I said, yeah, I'm keen, rang it by the elders, and it was good to go. And I was, had the opportunity to buy shares, which I did, and Julian said to me, John, I need you to take over as managing director. So that was 18 years ago, so I did. And I thought to myself, man, I don't know anything about doing this, but I'm going to learn. And wow, I was so grateful for team. Guys, team. Team is so important. You know what team stands for? Together each achieves more, eh? Yeah. And I had to learn from other guys. Learn from guys who've done it, who've been in business. And have grace for them and grace for others. But it was such a time of um, God teaching me to be humble and to learn. And guys, I want to say to you, don't, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to. You can think about yourself, but don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to. Stay humble. Work with others. And have grace for each other. Hey, I tell you what, God's really had to teach me how to have grace with different people. I've got quite a few guys from my, from my workshop, yeah? And some managers too. They know. 
<laughs> we have to have to not think deep and but you know what God we serve a God who loves us and a God who's got if a grace and abundance for us. Ask him for it, he will give it to you. Um, I then went through a bit of a season of innovations, um, just innovating different products. I developed a metatarsal protector that I got international patents for. Um, I, was, I was invited to a DISA award in 2007, DISA Design Institute, South Africa and Pretoria, to a big grand celebration, and I had to say a few words, which was very difficult, but um, it was something that, that, that set us on a path to getting mining contracts, having metatarsal protection on our boots. Um, and I just want to come back to you, Julian, very quickly. Um, you know, coming, coming out of the factory and into the office and, and, and taking a role as a director, Julian had to teach me to have vision. I didn't have vision. Have vision for the factory. Have vision for the company. Have vision for yourself. And guys, I want to encourage you. Have vision for yourself. What vision do you have for yourself? Because, you know, the word teaches us that without vision, my, my people perish. And the other thing he taught me was, was to, um, to find hidden potential. And that's what he did with me because he knew that I had hidden potential and he was going to dig it out of me. And man, did he find the hidden potential that was in me and he nurtured that and brought it out. And guys, I've learned that lesson and I'm always looking for the hidden potential in my guys and the young guys. And guys, can I encourage you? There are a lot of older guys here today, but it doesn't matter how old you are, he's always got somebody younger. But firstly, what hidden potential do you have? And can you ask God to pull it out of you? Secondly, there's young guys around us, young guys in our factories, in our workspaces, in our offices, in our schools, wherever you are and whatever you do, they've got a potential. Ask God to show you who's got a hidden potential that you can go and help them to untap it, okay? Um, the, my next highlight was knowing the power of prayer. You know, Taking over as MD, man, I needed leadership. I needed anointing. I needed authority. And I didn't feel that I had it. But man, I tell you what, did God answer prayers? God answered my prayer. And you know, to this day, I do not go into a management meeting or a board meeting without praying. I ask God for his anointing. I ask God for his leadership. And I ask him for wisdom every single day. And he gives it to me. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know how he does it, but he just does it. I want to challenge you guys. If you feel like you're lacking in that area of leadership <clears throat> and wisdom, you just ask him for it again. Next highlight, 2003, my brother, Dave, doing mission trips from the 90s to into the city, invites me to go on a mission trip to McCartland with him, so I go with And then I did a couple of trips over the next few years. 2009, I felt God calling me to start leading my own trips to the city. And wow, what a joy. It has been absolutely amazing. Guys, God's calling you to something good. He doesn't, doesn't call you to something that you're going to hate. He's going he's to call you to something that will give you joy. might be hard, but it will give you joy. And also, he'll never call you to something that, you, that he doesn't anoint you to do. And uh, we started doing mission trips. And since then, we have done years and years of mission trips. Many guys in this room here have been on mission trips. And it's amazing what God does with us when we go on mission. Day. Wow. If you've never been on a mission trip, guys, put your hand up. Go on a mission trip. Even if you're not part of a church. We run mission trips all the time. You can speak to myself or Dave. Man, it's so good to go on a mission trip. God will do something amazing in your life and through your life. Never mind what he does to those that we go to. Um, in 2014, I had three milestones in 2014. I don't know why, it was like a key year. First milestone was um, I started taking a, a team to a new area in Laribia, a village called Hasitza. Quite a few of you in here have been with me there. And man, <clears throat> God started a revival in, in, that, in that village, just because we went. I remember our first trip there, man, we had big speakers at the church, and the, it was so loud, the whole village could hear the worship. And people came in their hundreds. And we probably had about 200 people come and watch the Jesus film, which we, we put on, the, on a big sheet on the outside of the building, and it was freezing cold. But man, it was so good. And from that day on there, we regularly went back there. But what a milestone, just going on mission. And God gave you such a heart for missions. And it's not easy. I remember one night in the village, I'm lying on my, my camp mattress. I looked at bars, it was about half past nine. And I was preaching the next day, or teaching, no, no teaching because it was a Saturday. And I said to Bob, I'm never coming back. I can't do this. And she said, I know it's harder. 
You know, <laughs> God heard that. He, he put such a heart, such a heart, such a desire in my heart to go back, and such a love for the Basuji people. Within two months, I was back there. And we ain't stopping yet. We're going to just keep going. And since then, we've had a couple moved to Pateng, and we started a new work there. We built a church there. Some guys here were sold into putting money into that church, and it's just been amazing. Um, the years of being blessed by going on mission. Uh, 2014, next, next highlight was uh, Mighty Men's Conference. Anybody remember the Mighty Men's Conferences? 2014, probably 180,000 guys there, Angus Bucket, great time. Wow, it was a powerful time. <clears throat> Driving home, felt the Lord saying to me, I need you to start a pre meeting at work. I'm like, me? I'm going to start a pre meeting, but okay. So we're talking 10 years ago, eh? So I phoned one of my guys, Kevin, Kevin Pillay. Is it Kevin Pillay here, but it's the other one? So Kevin here yeah, is number two. So Kevin Pillay, number one, I phoned Kevin. I said, Kev, he's, he was a production supervisor. I said to him, please ask a couple of guys. We're going to pray on Monday morning. So he phones a couple of guys. So Monday morning, I, I got there not knowing what to expect, and there were about 15 or 20 guys waiting. So I shared a word with them, and, we, and I opened the word, and then we prayed. And the next, the next Monday, there were... There were more guys, another, like now, maybe 30 guys. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And after about a year, I just said to the Lord, I'm, I'm going to stop doing this because I don't see any fruit. Everybody just stands, he looks at me, and then walks away afterwards. I do everything. I bring the word, I expand the word, and I pray. And no one else does anything. And I thought, like, and, and, and I felt God said to me, I didn't tell you to stop. I told you to start this. You're not stopping. So I carried on faithfully. And guys, sometimes you might not see fruit in your ministry, but you carry on faithfully if God's called you to it. Whatever you do. Anyway, so about two weeks later, a guy got saved. Then a pre meeting at work. And then another guy. And then somebody came and asked for healing. Then somebody came and says, Would you mind if I lead the pre meeting? And then I'd actually start staying away a little bit so that other guys could lead. Now I've got about five different guys that lead. Then a few years ago, the ladies came to me and said, can we start bringing a worship song or two before we start praying? So I said, yeah. So of course now the time's going. It used to be 10 minutes, then 15 minutes, now half an hour. So perhaps the manager look at me, hey, come on, guys, need to get to work. But that was the boss. Okay. So anyway, I just want to show a 40-second video clip on the screen now of one of our pre-meetings. I took this video this year. Just have a look at this. Shut it up, I'm just stopping this. But I, I didn't just stop it, I asked of the Lord. I want to stop this, I'm not seeing fruit. He said, no, you wait, you carry on. How many lives are impacted there? And how many guys take that home? It's unbelievable. Guys, God's got an incredible plan for each one of us. You, 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 your life will be transformed if you just follow his plan. Let me get back to my notes. 2014. Um, same year, milestone. I had this this um, better task for protector I'd, I'd developed in 2003 and got a patent on. We used to stick it on the top of the boot, but it's a bit of a mission. Anyway, I was praying about how do I innovate this and get a better task for protector that's integral in the boot. And you guys would never see boots like this. It's for the mining industry. Um, <clears throat> but one morning, I was sitting in, in Alistair's office, who's our marketing director, and Nick knows him pretty well, and he was having an argument with our financial director. You know how that works, eh, guys? <laughs> the, the, the financial director, you want to sting everybody for as much as you can, and the marketing director wants to give it away for free. <laughs> anyway, I toned down a little bit, and suddenly I had a light bulb moment. You guys ever get that? I had this light bulb moment. And I drew this thing on the whiteboard. And in, while they were sitting there, and they just stopped the, the arguing, and I just looked at it, and I was like, 
wow, what an idea. I made a model, and within a week I was on a plane to Italy to our mold makers and to go and do this. And in the meanwhile, uh, uh, Stuart, our financial director, was applying for international patents on the product because it was revolutionary at the time. So this is a, what we call Stamella XP, and it's a full metatarsal boot. It's got, this is a cutaway. It's a metal-free product as well with a composite toe cap and a ballistic fabric midsole and an ankle protector and a built-in metatarsal protector. You can, I'm not going to pass it around because then you'll stop listening. So you, you can come and look at it afterwards. But that was a big milestone for me. And that boot has gone across the world. We've got mining contracts in Mongolia. We've got mining check contracts in Australia. We've sent that boot to Peru. We, we've supplied quarries in Europe. It is amazing. And it was like, for me, it was a milestone. It's another God moment. Guys, if you're thinking about something, you're struggling through something, you're wanting wisdom, ask. He loves you. Do you have got any idea how much God loves you? If every one of you, even if you don't know him, he loves you. So, next milestone, 2017. I've got two minutes. I'm good. 2017. I was having a coffee with Nick, and Nick said to me, do I want to invite you onto eldership? Started talking about that. And I'm like, well. But we through a number of discussions and working it out and accountability with different guys and, and Nick obviously with other other pastors that we relate to. Uh Boaz and I came onto eldership in 2017 with a couple of other guys. And it was a big milestone moment for us. Um, and I want to say this, if God calls you to something, he will anoint you for it. And you know, from that day that we were ordained here in the front of Red Point Church, God gave us an anointing to you, Elder. And it's not something that you can understand. It's not something that you know. It's not something that you just, something's different. And God is doing something different. And it was a massive milestone for us. And I tell you what, I'm so humble and so appreciate this incredible eldership team that we have at Red Point Church. Man, we've got such a good team of humble guys, but guys who deeply love the Lord, deeply love the Word, deeply have grace for each other and under next leadership. Thank you, Nick. Um, 2020, I've got two milestones, very quick. I was, it was lockdown. I was walking, I was doing laps around my pool. Not in my pool, remember, around my pool. So I don't do laps in the pool, don't do that. So, um, and I was, I was praying and the Lord said to me, you don't need, realize that you are wretched, poor, blind and naked from Revelation chapter 3. And I stopped dead in my tracks. I was shocked, like, how could you say that to me? And he said it again. You, don't, you do not realize you are wretched, blind, poor, and naked. And I went and looked up Revelation 3. I want to see, what does it say? And it says, I counsel you to come to me and buy gold, gold refined in the fire, and white clothes to wear, to hide your sinful, shame, no, your sinful nakedness, or shameful nakedness, and solve to put on your eyes so that you can see. And I thought, what does this mean? And I had to unpack it and go and read about it and go and ask about it. And started, I started a journey with God where He actually brought revelation to me about who are you and who am I? Who is He and who am I? And guys, if you don't know that, you need to find that out. Because God, He is who He is. And we are who He's made us to be. And we are made for purpose. And he has got a purpose for every one of us. And if you don't believe it, whether you believe it or not, I'm telling you now, you have a God-given purpose. Find that purpose. You can find it. It's on your knees. And it's in his word. Guys, I want to encourage you with one other takeaway. If you, if you want God to speak to you and you feel he's not speaking to you, open your Bible. You cannot speak. God does not speak through a closed word. He speaks through the open word of his Bible. It's his word to us. It's living and active. It speaks to us. 2020, I was locking up at work one day. I've gone one minute over. Um, I was locking up at work and I was grumbling. It had been a hard work. Guys were giving me gears. There were customers giving us gears. There were issues. I was accountable for this whole thing and it was, I was like grumbling. I was the last person there. I was locking up the office and I felt God said to me, John, this is the best I have for you. Four years ago, this is the best I have for you. It stopped me dead in my tracks again. I'm like, wow, what do you mean? And it's my best, isn't it? And you know, Monday I went to work, had a great day. That week I had a great week. The next week I had a great week, and the next month and the next year and year. And nothing changed at work. 
routines and my attitude to my work. What has God, God got you doing? And what's your attitude to it? We are here to serve Him and to serve His purposes in our lives. And if that means that you've got to be MD and for this company, for this season, then you best do it to the best of your ability. And that's what I'm doing. Yes, my guys. Amen. They will tell you. <laughs> my, next miles, my next milestone. Oh, what I wanted to say about that point. Introspection. Guys, introspection is a good thing. Look in. Ask God, how am I doing? Ask your wife, how are you doing? <laughs> and don't defend yourself or argue with her. Just ask your close friend or your brother or your pastor, someone that you trust. Ask them, how are you doing? How am I doing? Now then I have to ask God, how am I doing? And I'm going to get quiet and sometimes I'm like, <laughs> but anyway, it's good. It's good. Look in. And then you make the changes and ask God to help you. My next milestone, that's my last milestone, will happen in February 2026. So it's coming. What happens then? I'll be 65. And my working, con not contract, of my, my employment will end. And I will go onto a contract. What will that contract look like? What will the position be? I don't know. But man, I'm so excited for it. God's got this. And I'm looking forward to that day when I can do that. I follow a, I follow a cowboy preacher in, in a cowboy church in, uh, in, in, in America somewhere, I'm forgetting the place, now, North Carolina, Jeff Smith. And he always ends his little talks uh, with this. He says, come on, you all. Let's follow Jesus. 